Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We are beginning a new series on ethics. There's a deep discussion in Islam about ethics. We believe that the example of Islam has been given like a tree, where the tree has roots, branches and fruit. The roots of religion are usul ad or beliefs in God, the justice of God, the prophethood, the divine leadership and the hereafter. While the branches of religion are the prayers, the fasting, the hajj, uh, the poor rate, homes and fighting against one's evil desires. Again, there may be some additions like Amr bil Maruf, enjoining the good, forbidding the evil and Tawalli and Tabarri, loving Allah and the Holy Prophet and his holy progeny and disassociating from their enemies. <clears throat> We can also say that the fruit of that tree of uh, religion is ethics. And there are many dimensions to ethics. In the Western world, universities, in the entire social uh, justice of this world, we discuss ethics. We will be discussing in this series a number of ethical codes according to Islamic teachings. We will discuss why is it important not to have arrogance and to be humble in Islamic teachings. Why is it important to acquire different uh, qualities and virtues in Islamic teachings like generosity, like courageousness, like uh, fairness in person's, person's personal life. And there are many, many other teachings that we have to acquire and learn. Today we would like to give you an introduction to the Islamic ethics. Islamic ethics has not begun recently. The Holy Prophet وسلم, when describing why he has been ordained by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said Indeed I have been sent to accomplish the virtues and the ethics to their highest level. <coughs> And all prophets came to accomplish the virtual ethics and the ethical code that Islam has introduced. We today need to be more ethical in all dimensions in terms of education, in terms of practice, in terms of our conduct, in terms of our relation with other people. Islamic ethical code has many dimensions. It has a social dimension where we have Islamic social ethics, we have war ethics, we have uh, governance of ethics, we have judicial ethics, we have financial ethics, we have ethics about all the different norms and ways of life. And the Holy Quran, when describing the Holy Prophet, uh, وسلم, the Holy Quran says, In, um, Indeed, you are on the highest level of conduct. The Holy Prophet was chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be the master of all the prophets because he was of the best conduct. In a hadith which is known to be hadith miraj the Almighty says to the Holy Prophet وسلم, in the night of ascension, O my messenger, do you know why I chose you over all of the prophets? This is the conduct and the ethics of the Holy Prophet. He does not say, yes, I know. He says, Allah knows better. And when the Almighty described why I chose you, he said, because of your humbleness, because of your ethics. It is your humbleness and your conduct that made me choose you. Uh, it implies that Allah knows things before they happen. And the one who was going to have the best conduct uh, without any pressure, uh, was going to be the Holy Prophet and hence Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose him over all other messengers. The Ahlul Bayt alayhi wa are also known to be um, the best of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala due to their manners, due to their conduct and etiquettes. Uh, Imam Ali alayhi salam in Nahjul Balagha says that uh, there are three rights of children over their parents. Haqqul waladi al walid you know, the son or the child has three rights over the father. And you hasena isma. The father should give a good name to the child. Second, 
uh, Quran. The father and the parents should teach how to recite the Holy Quran to the children. And the third, they must teach them ethics or etiquettes. Um, and that is the most important part of one's life. Imam al-Baqir al-Islam says that on the Day of Judgment, the most weighty thing in the Mizan, which is the balance in English, we say the balance. On the Day of Judgment, the most weighty thing in the balance of a believing person will be his or her conduct. It is the akhlaq that will be the most weighty thing. Your akhlaq has to be good in, in all dimensions. And many times people believe that we are uh, uh, good uh, and we are only and only not so good at few times. It is important that you are good at all times. We have seen that many times people are on their best behavior outside because they are meeting strangers. And as soon as they come home, uh, they are not on good akhlaq, they are not on good manners. The real you is when you're at home, when you're with your own family. And then you have to prove that you are on good akhlaq. Many times having good manners outside is good, but it is not good enough until and unless you prove to be on your best manners with your family. And the Holy Prophet says, Ahsanukum, ahsanukum The best of you are the ones who are the best with their family and I am the best of you with my family. So he was the best father, he was the best husband, he was the best grandfather, he was the best brother. He didn't have any brothers and sisters but he was the best in every way possible. We need to understand that in our life we need to contain ourselves and we have five different types of relations. The first is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There were many scholars who contained themselves even in their privacy and they believed according to the traditions uh, we must not be relaxed when we are all by ourselves, when we are isolated. To cover yourself, to be on your good akhlaq and to be uh, uh, upright is extremely important when you are all alone. And when you are all alone and you um, are not using proper language, uh, then that will impact your real life. And hence, we believe that your relationship with God has to be proper. You cannot pray naked even if you are alone. You still have to cover yourself because we believe that God sees you and hears you. And hence, one has to contain themselves when with God. Our second relationship with the Holy Prophet وسلم, and with our Imams. And we must obey them, we must respect them, we must show obedience to the Holy Prophet and the Ahlul Bayt. <clears throat> our third relationship is with uh, our parents and our relatives and um, with our friends. And that has to be. Um, perfect. We are created for perfection but it will not be perfect on day one so we have to improve all the time. And once a person has improved their relationship with their parents and family members uh, then they will also look at the larger community and their friends and that also has to be you have to be the ideal and the role model friend. And once a person accomplishes their relationship with their family members uh, than their friends. After that, they, ha they have to improve their relationship with the environment. Even with animals, one must show um, a contained or a, a good conduct, a contained personality. You must not hit the animals, you must not burn them, you must not kill them for fun. And even that has ethics and manners. You cannot destroy the plantation. So there are etiquettes for the whole of environment and there are etiquettes for the entire life for every different aspect of this life. We will in this series um, cover many different topics and it is the way of life and it is 
not only just the prayers and the fasting and the Hajj that changes one's life, it is your conduct, it is your practice and your ethics that will mean the most in the hereafter. People do not know how well you pray, that is between you and your God. People don't know how strong your belief is, that is between you and your God. But what um, affects the people is your akhlaq, it is your etiquettes. And that, if you give a bad impression, um, you're not only just giving a bad impression of yourself, you're giving a bad impression of your religion, of your prophet, of your imams, of your family. In olden days, they would always say that uh, if uh, an elderly person saw some bad manners from a young person, they would say, is that how your parents have trained you? So your etiquettes and your manners have great impact on not only just your personality, but it says a lot about your parents, your teachers, your elders, your religion, and one must be on their best behavior, not only outside, but at home and with everyone. We will continue in this series to cover many different aspects of ethics. And inshallah, uh, we will base some of our teachings and most of our teachings on the um, manners taught by the Holy Quran, the traditions of the Holy Prophet and the Ahlul Bayt We will uh, begin our first few series from a uh, sermon from Amir al muminin the commander of the faithful, Ali ibn Abi Talib which is known to be Khutbah al-Muttaqeen, the famous sermon that he delivered to a person called Hammam. And that sermon is known to be the uh, sermon that describes the pious people. Inshallah, till next time, fi manillah.